about low vision rehab low vision rehabilit so that we are able to provide something for everyone no financial interest uh, 90% of the so called blind population do not have a total loss of visual functions what they have is reduced acuity reduced field or other ocular pathology which leads in a lack of response to conventional correc corrections and which results in impaired function so most of them retain a degree of usable vision and it is in this place that low vision aids become handy rehabilitation strategies in a child with low vision are focused on three areas one function oriented that is improving visual function improving visual acuity contrast and field and reducing glare second is goal oriented to help achieve specific behavioral goals like cooking shopping reading etc and the third is attitude oriented that is to help them adjust psychologically to the limitations imposed by the impairment an effect of visual problems on the child's development depend upon many factors one of course the severity of the disease and the type of visual loss and another thing is age at which the condition develops because a child born with congenital bilateral anophthalmos definitely needs a different strategy than a child who has uh, rp and who has bl become blind in his teens and of course it develops on the uh, it depends on the overall functioning of the child visual impairment can have serious effects on motor cognitive and social developmental zones also so this is to be bo borne in mind and also children with multiple disabilities pose a special problem anyway early assessment is the key early assessment leads to early diagnosis and these children tend to benefit more from early interventions and first step in any rehabilitation process is to decide on adaptive devices or techniques to maximize the residual uh, vision use and all these findings have to be properly documented this is the documentation form which we follow in our hospital coming to low vision aids low vision aid is any device which enables the patient to improve his or her visual performance this could be an optical device or a non optical device a uh, telescope is one of the commonly prescribed uh, low vision aid for distant vision this could be handheld or spectacle mounted and binocular spectacle mounted produces about 3x magnification this is a child using a uh, telescope to read the blackboard and sim simultaneously writing down near vision we have stand mag spectacle magnifiers which can produce a uh, magnification of plus 0.4.5 diopters to plus 24 diopters ordinary spherical lenses but they cause uh, peripheral distortion hence practically only up to 10 diopters is possible lenticular spherical lenses have a, a diopter of plus 24 aspheric lenticular designs are not manufactured in india usually they are imported <coughs> sorry handheld magnifiers can be self illuminated or non illuminated and these are usually used for short term sporting task Uh, the problem with that is uh, the focal length has to be maintained so it is slow and uncomfortable for prolonged reading causes hand and arm fatigue less effective in patients with poor dexterity of hands and has a limited field stand magnifiers are more handy this is a uh, visually impaired girl from one of the blind schools in kerala she is reading her textbook with using a stand magnifier this can be used even in children with hand tremors problem is that it requires a flat surface and relatively small field of view other magnifiers dome and the pocket magnifier which is very portable and reading magnifier like we get in cctvs converts the material readily into large print and this enables writing simultaneously contrast sensitivity is a big problem in most of this uh, children definitely uh, they need to improve their contrast uh, this is accomplished by avoiding glossy prints better uh, printed materials bold and uh, larger prints by using typoscopes and filters for peripheral vision we have limited experience but uh, we could prescribe some reverse telescopes in some children uh, technology has advanced and mobile phones are one of the mainstays in for many of the visually impaired uh, people you can see a smartphone with um, uh, tactile stimuli for, uh, which is very uh, friendly for a visually impaired person and you can have different mobile apps also selection of low vision aid uh, first we have to do a subjective and cycloplegic refraction 
assess best corrected visual acuity and required magnification, and always assess patient's ability to comprehend written material and recheck the field after issuing the low vision aid. And magnification is the enlargement of the retinal image size to provide resolution. And we have four methods to increase magnification. One is increasing in the object size. This is increase in the size of the print or by repeated photocopying you can get a larger print. But this is usually limited to about 2.5 times magnification and scanners or special displays are used to increase zoom. And decrease in viewing distance is the second method. This is also called approach magnification, that is placing the object to be viewed at the focal point of the lens. All the plus lens magnifiers, including handheld, stand mounted, spectacle mounted, all this make use of this principle. Real image magnification is the most uh, effective way, like the commonly used computer monitor. This provides up to 70% magnification and rapid change of magnification is possible without changing focus. Binocular viewing uh, is possible. Patients with field restriction can read more effectively and contrast reversal and adjustments are possible and text can also be highlighted. Telescopic magnification, uh, the disadvantage is reduction of field, which, used, which is a principle used in telescopes. And use the lowest possible magnification to solve the required task and select the design appropriate to the task. And no single device can offer a, a solution for all the problems posed by a visually impaired person. He may need to carry more than one visual aid for different tasks. Training is a very important part of low vision aid dispensing, and it is very important for compliance. The trainer has to motivate the user uh, to look at the advantages of the low vision aid rather than the disadvantages. Because, uh, for example, in a uh, stand magnifier, the child may find it very cumbersome to carry the magnifier, and she might associate it with a social stigma because the child has to lean over the surface and to read. But uh, emphasis that she may be able to read the textbook or newspaper better with this. And after this, most of the children, uh, if they are fully motivated, they accept the low vision aid. And myths regarding the use of residual vision should be avoided. This is still prevalent among this population because most of them fear that once they use the low vision aid, whatever vision I am having, doctor, will it uh, deteriorate? So you should emphasize that your vision is not going to deteriorate by using a low vision aid. Perhaps it will help you better to adjust uh, to the social demands. And training program has to be tailored to the needs of the patient, not generalized. For example, uh, two children of same age with same visual acuities may not benefit from the same visual aid because their needs and expectations may be different and the practitioner has to be definitely flexible to the needs of the uh, user. And don't feel discouraged if the patient uh, doesn't want to use a, a particular low vision aid. This is very common. After explaining all the low vision aids in detail, the patient often tells you, you know, ma'am, I usually, uh, I, I don't want a low vision aid. But our experience is that most of the uh, children or adults, they do return after a few weeks and they definitely ask you, please give me the low vision aid. So I think I am better off with it. We had um, evaluated 133 children from 2007 to 2014 at our low vision clinic. Uh, These children under the age of 15. And low vision aids dispensed were 117. And there were few children, uh, 16, who were lost to follow up. This was the uh, breakup of low vision aids prescribed at our hospitals. Coming to assistive devices for the visually handicapped, there are various educational devices, reading braille and writing braille, braille, shorthand machine, talking clock, calculator, talking address book, measuring tape, needle threader, recreational aids, playing cards, chess set. All these are specially designed for the use by the visually impaired person. For example, in this chess set, unlike the usual chess set, they have some tactile clues also. For example, there's a black squares are relatively raised than the white. Also, black pieces have some knobs over them so that the visually impaired person can identify the object easily. Nautics and the signature guide, letter writer. Environmental modifications, many things can be done for a visually impaired person to uh, improve his performance in his immediate environment. Uh, use uh, 
prints with large contrast, uh, large blocks, uh, large optotypes, and uh, good contrast. Uh, food uh, to be served in plates with high contrast. Use a lamp and good illumination. This is a liquid level indicator and a cutting board. Cutting board has two surfaces, white and black. And depending upon the object to be cut, you can either uh, use either of the sides to provide good contrast. This is a, a staircase and a, a cooking top. And play activities are the most important part of uh, early development of any child. Not only a visually impaired children, but uh, for a visually impaired child, I told you that interventions are to be started very early and play has a very important role in introducing them many of the concepts. Like uh, you can note that this child is uh, sitting amidst a lot of colorful bowls and this definitely increases his sensory awareness and so they should be introduced to more of colors, more of contrast, toys specially designed uh, for them, sp uh, speaking toys or uh, uh, toys which have some light inside and encourage eye contact. That is a very important part of our uh, social interactions. And uh, uh, visually impaired adults usually, uh, they have difficulty in establishing an eye contact because, uh, uh, because of low vision, the patient is not able to identify the face of the person he is talking to. One uh, technique suggested is that the caregiver or the parent usually wears a uh, colored goggle. And so that the child can see the colored goggle and the child is encouraged to look at the face. So, uh, so the child, if, even though the child has low vision, the patient, when he becomes older, will be able to establish an eye contact. And encourage touching, holding and reaching out for objects. Uh, introduce them to various surfaces and textures. This is the lower picture shows one of the uh, play rooms in our schools for the visually impaired stimulate thinking and creativity and these people definitely they need a, a, a very sympathetic uh, kind of uh, approach from our all of us and uh, engage them in activities that stimulate thinking creativity creativity cooperation and social growth as madam already told if you try to walk in their shoes for some time we'll uh, be able to uh, understand the uh, their problems better and personal counseling is a very important part of any rehabilitation process. The counselor should be a friend, philosopher and a guide to the visually impaired person. The counselor should encourage the person to learn new skills and to learn new ways of looking at situations. Mobility training is a mobility training is a mobile part. part. Education. Uh, we have a number of uh, special schools for the blind where they receive braille education and also some introduction to print. But now the consensus is that all the child, uh, children should be given an opportunity to engage in inclusive education because it improves their interactions with the society and with their peers. Well, uh, about blind schools, the children are growing in a uh, comfort zone. That there are a lot of people who share their disabilities, their problems. So once you get educated uh, uh, through the blind schools, after that when you have to face the society, they find it difficult to um, uh, comply with their social obligations. So inclusive education is a norm for any child who can uh, read print with however difficulty like low vision aids, uh, they should be given a chance to uh, study print. But uh, for children who are completely blind, there is no other option. They should be taught Braille. Because Braille has also a lot of literature on almost any subject. So uh, that helps a person to uh, get introduced and to many new concepts and brings a lot of personal change. Vocational rehabilitation is an integral part. Uh, for some time, we used to believe that what are the opportunities for vocation for uh, blind? Uh, most common answers which we get are they could work as telephone operators, they could work as uh, uh, some craftsmen or uh, some other jobs like that. And uh, this is a blind IAS officer from India and uh, uh, there is no uh, limitation to the uh, heights they can achieve. It is possible even with the visual impairment. 
community based rehabilitation is also very important uh, this shows the uh, blind cricket team of india we won the world cup uh, and i don't think many of us know that and this is a, a chess match so the model for rehabilitation services as ophthalmologists we make the diagnosis and try to treat the disease in possible ways if not possible we refer them to a low vision therapist who makes a low vision assessment and provides the low vision aid but this does not stop here further uh, rehabilitation therapist occupational therapist uh, some other support providers in the community and the counselors all these people have a very important role in uh, helping these unfortunate individuals attain their uh, full potentials and another thing to be stressed is the parents or the family of the visual impaired child it is very difficult to have uh, such a situation in your life and they need constant motivation and constant support and uh, this has to be a very important part of our rehabilitation process low vision practice is very different from con conventional eye care service as we of the mall this we tend to treat the cause of disease conditions and uh, as madam already told uh, often we are in a situation that uh, okay nothing can be done into this patient but there are things which you could help him to achieve and this are addressed by low vision rehabilitation services uh, we address the consequences imposed by blindness in conventional eye care doctor is the source of action and patients are asked to put the drops come for surgery come for follow ups that case but in low vision rehabilitation low vision uh, practitioners are the guides and patients are the sources of action low vision services do not cure the cause of visual impairment nor does it replace the need for other concurrent treatments what they do is utilize the remaining vision to its full potential low vision rehabilitation in children involves early interventions with appropriate aids which are customized to the patient's needs and expectations by dedicated professionals you have to be very dedicated and you have to have a professional approach also if done in this way a comprehensive low vision rehabilitation programs can have a profound change in can bring about profound changes in the lives of individuals uh, maybe you cannot do nothing to their optic disc to their macula uh, to their glaucomatous uh, cup there are limitations for our uh, practice but much can be done to enhance the patient's quality of life thank you